So I know that this is probably going to come as a shock to most of you watching, but Tim Ryan is still running for president. Now, I know you're probably thinking, who? But to uh, refresh your memory, this is the individual who was destroyed by Tulsi Gabbard at the first debate and was then destroyed by Bernie Sanders at the second debate. He's the reason why we got the famous I wrote the damn bill line from Bernie Sanders. But he's still running for president. And um, here's the thing about him. So he co-sponsored Pramila Jayapal's Medicare for All bill on the day it was introduced. But all of a sudden, now that he's running for president, he's speaking out against it. And here's the thing. He's not going to win. He will lose. He's not going to be president. But now he's making it clear that not only does he deserve to lose, he also needs to lose his seat in the House. Like, he needs to be primaried. Because what he said in an interview with Jenk Uger of TYT is absolutely disqualifying. Any Democrat who says what he's about to say should lose their seat because this is what Republicans would say. This is what Republicans would do. But here's Tim Ryan. He's going to explain that he wouldn't vote for Medicare for all in the event Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren become president. Take a look. Let's say that uh, uh, a Warren or a Sanders wins, just for a second, okay? And you're in Congress, and they say, Tim, I need your vote on Medicare for all. What do you do? I would not, not if it's taken private insurance away. I think if we build the alternative system, let people get in over time if they like it, let it compete with the private insurance. Uh, and as I said, I think this is a very risky proposition. Um, you look at the number of union people in these industrial states, they like their health insurance. They've negotiated it, they've sacrificed wages for it, and, and I think us going in there saying, we know you really like it, and we know your wages are down, and the whole world's collapsing around you, but we got a better idea for you. I, I, that's, that's a loser in my mind. You, you know they, they have insurance, they, they'd have the Medicare insurance, rather than the private insurance. You, you think they still would prefer their private insurance even though it covers less? Here's what I'm saying. This is a bird in a hand, okay? And people don't trust politicians. They don't trust Washington. Democrats, Republicans. So any politician saying, we're going to take what you like best in your life, the most security you have in your life is your health insurance, we're going to force you to get rid of that. That's not a winner. Okay, so what he's telling you there in not so many words is he is okay with this system where 500,000 people go bankrupt due to medical bills every single year. He is okay that people die if they don't have insurance because he wants to make sure that that private insurance industry is maintained. These murderous vultures have to be part of the system. They have to be maintained if he's going to vote for any healthcare reform package. Okay. Well, you really should explain why you co-sponsored Pramila Jayapal's bill, because if you contend that you won't vote for a bill that takes away private health insurance, and Bernie and Jayapal's bill both do pretty much that. They have the same provisions, Section 107, which says private companies can't offer what's covered under Medicare. There's a duplicative ban. And also, they both have Section 201 that offers comprehensive benefits. When you put two of these things together, you're getting rid of private, essentially. So, for you to say you wouldn't support Medicare for All, but yet you co-sponsored it, you're telling your constituents that you're full of shit. You're trying to placate progressives. You're saying, look, I know there's a lot of momentum in the Democratic Party for Medicare for All, but um, I'm not actually going to support it. I'll co-sponsor it to get you off my back, to get you to stop calling my office. But when push comes to shove, I'm going to side with the Republicans and the murderous for-profit private health insurance industry. Despicable. And the reasoning he gives as to why he votes against it are idiotic. So he says, union people like their insurance. Well, not everyone is in a union. And even if you are in a union and you get insurance and you love your coverage currently, first of all, I guarantee it's not going to be as comprehensive. Um, second of all, you lose your job, you lose your insurance. I know union gives you more stability, but still, if you tie your health insurance to your employer, that gives you a lack of stability that you absolutely need in healthcare. I mean, we should be stable when it comes to numerous things, basic necessities, clean water, healthcare. But uh, he wants to tie it to your employer, but then he says, you know, if Democrats say we're going to take away what you like best in your life, 
Mo the most security you have in your life is your health insurance. We're going to force you to get rid of it. That's not a winner. So he is imposing his view on voters without actually talking to them. Because if he talked to voters, they would tell him, I don't like my private health insurance. I don't like it. It's a ripoff. I pay thousands of dollars every single year and they still don't cover everything. Why the fuck am I paying them? If I still have a $5,000 deductible, my deductible is $6,500. Do you think I like my fucking insurance? No, I don't like my insurance. He's saying this because he is a shill for the health industry. And if he's not a shill, then maybe he is afraid that they'd bankroll an opponent. Either way, the man's a coward and a liar. He also says uh, unions sacrificed higher wages to get better health care benefits. Okay, well, wouldn't it be better if um, they didn't have to negotiate health care and they could just focus exclusively on higher wages? Wouldn't the outcome be that people get higher wages if health care is no longer a bargaining chip? I mean, it, what a self-defeating premise to uh, invoke. What an idiot you are. And my favorite part is he says, you know, people don't trust politicians. Oh, really? They don't trust politicians? Well, maybe it's because people like you, who sold out to special interests and won't pass policies that they want you to, are the reason why, you know, we don't trust politicians, because you're all corrupt. So what he's saying here, it shows that he's either afraid of the industry, or if he actually believes the words that came out of his mouth there, then he's so uninformed about healthcare policy that he shouldn't be a lawmaker. He should resign in shame immediately because if you know that little about healthcare policy, if you know that little about the voters and their feelings towards health insurance, you should not be representing anyone because people don't like their health insurance. They like their doctors. How many times do we have to say this? People want to keep their doctors they don't care about their insurance. Nobody likes the paperwork that you have to fill out. Nobody likes their monthly premiums, copays, deductibles. Nobody likes that. So what he's saying here, it's bogus. It's all lies. And, you know, just one anecdote out of thousands that are available uh, demonstrates exactly the issue with health insurance. Because even if you have private health insurance, you feel as if you're secure, you may not be secure. Because as Anna Werner of CBS News reports, Frank Esposito says it started last March with unrelenting back pain. He could barely move and an MRI soon showed a bulge in his spine. A specialist told him to go to the closest hospital immediately. Doctors at the emergency room said he needed surgery. The herniation was so severe it could cut his nerve, Esposito said, and render him paralyzed. The surgery was a success, but then the bills started coming. Over $650,000 in all. His insurance company said his back surgery didn't qualify as an emergency and wasn't medically necessary. But people love their private health insurance, says Tim Ryan. Disgusting. I mean, this system is morally reprehensible. It, it's it's awful. I want to say it's broken, but it's functioning as you would expect a capitalist healthcare system to function. It's cheaper if people die, if they refuse to pay for medical procedures, because the goal is not the delivery of healthcare for companies like Aetna. The goal is to increase shareholder value. But what Tim would argue is, you know, I see that, I get you, and I know, Mike, that you don't like private health insurance. Fair enough. But why wouldn't we give people the choice? Maybe allow, you know, a Medicare buy-in. Okay, well, you know, that sounds all right, but here's what happens in practice. These private health insurance companies, with the goal of making money, mind you, what they're going to try to do is save money by pushing everyone onto the public plan and only offer coverage to healthy people because that is what will make them the most amount of money. And that means that the public version will be overburdened and you're going to separate risk pools when the goal of single payer, the reason why it's so effective is because you throw everyone into one big risk pool. The fact that he doesn't get this, it's disgusting, but I believe that he does know this. I think he knows the facts. It's just that he doesn't want to admit the facts. Because he is a liar and he's a coward 
and he's afraid of the health insurance industry. So, you know, needless to say, he shouldn't just lose the nomination. He needs to lose his seat. So if you are in Ohio in that district, consider primarying him because this individual is not looking out for his constituents. He's looking out for the interests of the health industry. And that's disgusting because this industry's greed leads to death and bankruptcy. To defend that is especially grotesque and morally reprehensible. So shame on Tim Ryan. He needs to lose his seat. He needs to be out of politics because if you're not going to represent people, then I don't know why you're there. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.